read one out this weekend, I thought it would be perfect to go back in time 20 years ago to my introduction to Chris Evans in the film Cellular from 2004, starring Chris Evans, Kim Basinger, Jason Statham, amongst other people. The plot is about a guy named Ryan who's living in LA, gets a random call from a woman named Jessica Martin, played by Kim Basinger, who's been kidnapped and locked up in an attic, putting wires together on a broken phone, trying to reach somebody to call for help. And for the rest of the film, it's the main character Ryan trying to outsmart her captors and figure out exactly what's going on. Up until now, I never had the opportunity to talk about this film because I've been wanting to discuss it for years. Everybody talks about Chris Evans as Captain America or even the Human Torch and maybe other other films like Not Another Teen Movie or the film Gifted, which came out about seven years ago, which I quite liked. This one was my introduction to Chris Evans, and I was... <laughs> it was really interesting to see him in hindsight after all this time, knowing where his career has gone since then. Not that he didn't have other roles before this, but in my experience, I did not get to see this film in theaters when it came out. My mom had rented it from Blockbuster, if I remember correctly, and I wasn't really expecting much, just like a typical, eh, just some harmless fun to watch. As soon as those captors come into the door, breaking through, I was immediately hooked right in. My mom had the same reaction. We both went, what the hell is going on here? Now, this is obviously not the first time we've seen kidnapping in a movie like this. There's probably many, many, many examples talking about how someone is trying to save somebody who's been kidnapped. It's a cat and mouse chase, you know, all the usual stuff. But I would say this is very underrated and very suspenseful as well. It's directed by David R. Ellis, who's known for Snakes on a Plane, also made Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco, and was a second unit director in the film Patriot Games with Harrison Ford. Not exactly a standout action director, but in comparison to the rest of his filmography, at least the ones that I've seen, this is probably the most skillful that he's ever done. And in comparison to some other other schlocky action films that you would see. I think this really outshines a lot of them. As far as the characters, there's really not much character depth. We don't really know much about them. It's a very airtight screenplay by Chris Morgan. Jessica's been kidnapped by these dirty cops, as it turns out and Ryan has to find a way to save her. It starts off very shocking when her captors come in to take her away. Then it slows down as we're introduced to Ryan and him trying to win back his ex-girlfriend, played by Jessica Biel. Then he gets a call from Jessica, and at first he doesn't believe her, thinking that it's a prank call, but he inevitably decides to hand it over to the police and see if they can figure out what's happening. And when Ethan, Jason Statham's character, interrogates her about where her husband Craig is hiding at, the ensuing struggle that happens manages to convince Ryan that the kidnapping is real. We'll get to Chris Evans in a minute, but this look he has right here, as he hears Jessica screaming bloody murder over the phone. That just might be among the best acting I've ever witnessed from Chris Evans. The look on his face is explicitly clear. Okay, this is not a joke. This is the real deal. Ryan starts off in the film very self-absorbed and childish and immature, as described by his ex-girlfriend. But then he does a complete 180 once he realizes what's happening with Jessica, and he turns into the more good-hearted person that we know him from other films like Captain America. Basically, he starts off as more of the human torch, Ladies call him Torch. Then he becomes Steve Rogers for the rest of the film. This is probably my favorite Chris Evans role outside of Captain America. He's not your typical action hero who will just go in and deck everybody within a few seconds. He's someone who's very vulnerable, but relies on his wit and a lot of luck in order to survive certain situations. Like when he intercepts them at the bank and manages to get the tape that Craig is holding onto in his safety deposit box, and barely manages to get away by the skin of his teeth, putting a foil in their entire plan. It's kind of like Die Hard in that way, where everything for the bad guys is going exactly the way they want it to, but nobody counts for this one lone person that's going to come in and screw everything up. But another credit to Chris Evans' performance, once he hears Jessica and Ethan going at each other physically when he threatens her son, he's listening through the phone and he wishes there was something that he could do, but obviously he doesn't know where she is, so he can't do anything about it. He's just hoping and praying that somehow nothing bad happens to any one of them. To Jessica and her son. In a lot of ways, he's the audience character as we're watching this unfold. At least that's my experience anyway. I don't know about anybody else. On the note of Jason Statham, uh, this is a typical thing that we've seen from Jason Statham. I don't really think he's known for his acting range. It's not really much to talk about, but he's scary in this one. And he is intimidating in the other stuff that he's been in. This one, where he's the bad guy, I find it to be a lot more horrifying. Every time he walks into the attic and confronts Jessica, speaking for myself, you don't really know exactly what he might do to her or what he's going to say. Like after he locks her in the attic, but then he comes back in with this giant hammer, takes a huge swing at her. She ducks thinking that he's going to hit her, but then he destroys the phone that's on the pole just to keep her from calling for help. Out of all of his captors, the one that's the most scary is this guy 
who's credited as Detective Mad Dog. Because at one point, Jessica loses the connection to Ryan, and she starts to click the wires together to see if she can reach anybody, or even Ryan, if she can help it. But then Detective Mad Dog sees that the light on the home phone is blinking. He picks it up and realizes what she's doing. And, uh... The music in that moment, spectacularly composed by John Ottman, virtually every time I watched it, and even on the first viewing, I literally froze like a statue. And the look on Jessica's face, I like to think of it as her saying, Lord in heaven above, help me. But then with a piece of glass that she manages to scrounge up off the floor, she cuts his arm, severing his brachial artery, killing him within seconds. Benefits of being a high school biology teacher. I can still remember specifically, as she cuts his arm, I thought, okay, that really didn't do much. But then he starts to grab his arm and he goes, what did you do to me? And then she explains to him and the audience what she did. And I thought, oh my God. And even watching it last night, I clutched my arms like this. You're not getting anywhere near my arms with that piece of glass. No way. Let's talk about Kim Basinger. We all know her from the 1989 Batman film with Michael Keaton as Vicki Vale. I think along with Jamie Lee Curtis, she is a pretty notable scream queen. The screaming that she does in here is, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's obnoxious. I mean, after a while, it does kind of grate on my nerves a little bit. But to her credit, and the character's credit too, she's not completely helpless. She actually does put up a fight with her captors. And when she sees her son being threatened, she literally goes off on Jason Statham, screaming, He's a baby, you bastard! He's a baby! And even killing one of her captors, like I mentioned earlier, and even chokes one of her captors nearly to death at the climax of the movie. You could talk it up to her being a damsel in distress in a sense, yes, but she also knows how to take care of herself. She's not afraid to stand up to someone who's threatening her. And just like with any good parent who cares for their children, she's not gonna stand by and let somebody threaten their child. If I were in her kid's situation and my mom saw that, oh, trust me, she would not go quietly into the night. As for the film's action sequences, it's not like bones of action like you would see in a film like Speed, although it does kind of remind me of it, not just because of its location in Los Angeles. Like when Ryan steals the security car from Jessica's son's school, goes into opposing traffic in order to try to keep up with her captors, all these cars are swerving around and he's trying to avoid getting hit, and then this one truck loses all of the lawn care gear that it's carrying, all the cars right behind it crash into each other, and he barely manages to get out of it alive. Ryan's response as he manages to get out of there is exactly how I feel. Now if you haven't seen cellular. I am going to go into some details about the plot. I've literally started to go into some of the logistics here, but if you haven't seen it, first of all, I implore you to check it out. Last chance if you haven't seen it. The biggest spoiler in this film is that Jessica's captors are dirty cops, and they were caught by her husband murdering and robbing two drug dealers on a nearby street corner when he was recording something for his real estate company. And one of their associates, Jack Tanner, played by Noah Emmerich, is a colleague of William H. Macy's character, Sergeant Mooney. Sergeant Mooney goes to Jessica's house to investigate, but is thrown off by the poser that's there. And at first he writes it off thinking, okay, maybe it was nothing. But once he sees Ryan's face on the news, he starts to put the pieces together and realizes that, okay, something else is happening here. What's going on? William H. Macy doesn't have a huge part, but he adds a good amount to this. He's on the verge of retirement, about to open a day spa with his wife, <laughs> which comes to one of, if not the best comebacks ever put to film once the film wraps up. I think those chemicals from your beauty parlor are getting to your brain, Moon. It's a day spa, you f Because his friend Jack Turner keeps calling it a beauty parlor and he always corrects him saying it's a day spa. It all comes to a head when they meet up at the Santa Monica Pier to make an exchange and then a big fight ensues between him and Ethan and William H. Macy comes in when he catches wind of what's happening with his colleague Jack Tanner. And my favorite line from William H. Macy in this entire thing besides the whole comeback he has at the finale is this. It doesn't matter what I believe. What's important is that you believe I will put a bullet in your skull if you don't let him up. Jack, did I ever tell you how much I hate dirty cops? And then in the last moment of tension, when Jessica and her family try to escape, that one captor who we thought was dead from her choking him, wakes up, pulls his gun out ready to kill him, and then Ryan comes in and stops him, slams the car door onto his head. That's what a man does when he has America's ass. And there's a couple of looks that Jessica's giving off to Ryan. It's almost like she's smitten by him. And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, lady. Your husband's right near there. Don't... Don't get any ideas. I get it. He's attractive. I'm not gay, now that there's anything wrong with it. But <laughs> pump your brakes there, lady. You got a family to worry about. Oh, and did I mention uh, I like to call this film the movie where Captain America saves Vicki Vale? I know. I know. But he can do this all day.
Oh, geez, I just remembered the uh, the lawyer that Ryan runs into when their lines get crossed as he's talking to Jessica. Uh, that guy is just hilarious. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice this similarity that Ryan has with Steve Rogers in the first Captain America. Oh, Luke is coming back. Awesome. Come on, buddy. I'm sorry! How are you? <laughs> Suck it! <laughs> but yeah, if you haven't seen Cellular, please do so. Those are my thoughts on Cellular. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun talking about this, but I also wanted to give you guys a quick update on what I've decided to do with certain social media platforms. I have decided that I'm not gonna be on Twitter anymore. I haven't deleted it yet as of this recording. I'm gonna be hopping over to Blue Sky and I already have a Threads account, which I'll work on putting the new links in the description for you guys so that way you can go there if you wanna follow me for certain things and see updates from me. Long story short, with Twitter, all of the stuff that's been brewing for the last several years ever since Elon Musk took over, now I don't wanna to get too deep into the weeds on this one, and now that the election is over, it's gotten out of hand, especially with the right-wing propaganda BS that's been cemented in every corner of Twitter right now, or X. I don't know, you can call it whatever you want. I've fallen out of love with Twitter and I won't be using it anymore. I'm gonna come up with a new end screen for you guys to put my new links together. And I'll put the links in the description as we go on. I'm not gonna be able to perfectly get it right. It's something that I'm gonna have to get used to. But keep your eyes open, I'll let you know once I have the accounts up and ready to go. So yeah, just wanted to give you an update on that one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've seen Cellular, comment below and tell me what your thoughts are. And as always, see you in the next one.